This is not bankrupt Sri Lanka or any other developing country. This is the scene in China, the world's second largest economy. Citizens are storming the Bank of China after being unable to access or withdraw their life savings for months. In my previous video about Chinese banks, I covered how this situation started in the Henan region of China. Now the problem is spreading throughout the country and people are panicking over losing access to their hard-earned money. More details have now come out from the fraud investigation that shows that the fraudster behind the Henan Bank scheme has possibly left the country and gotten foreign citizenship. The government is refusing to return the $6 billion that have disappeared from bank deposits. As the news picks up steam in Chinese social media and mainstream media, the strain on Chinese banks is getting heavier and heavier. Now it's deemed less safe to keep cash in these banks, including the big four state-owned banks. It's extremely likely that China is heading towards a complete collapse of its financial systems as people lose trust in the banks. This could have far-reaching effects on its economy and the global economy. Banks are also embroiled in an ongoing scandal involving several rural lenders in the central Henan province. Six billion dollars in deposits disappeared. Adding social instability, protests and street agitation. This is expected to have repercussions beyond the country's financial sector. In a financial crackdown that has had ripple effects across the world's second largest economy. Before jumping into the investigation and the fugitive, let's quickly go over the scheme that kickstarted this whole panic. I covered this in detail in my previous video. I would highly recommend you check that out by clicking the card above, but here's a quick recap. And first, a side note. A lot of my China videos are bombarded with negative comments and dislikes from bots. So if you guys enjoy the content, it would help me out a lot if you scroll down and hit that like button. Customers of the four small banks in Henan have been locked in a months-long dispute with these banks after they suddenly suspended online cash withdrawals in April. Banks initially attracted deposits by offering extremely high interest rates and advertised it as a risk-free rate. Banks also skirted around Chinese banking laws by advertising online and attracting deposits outside their jurisdiction. As COVID hit, the house of cards started crumbling and banks had to shut down withdrawals to prevent bankruptcy back in April. In order to not cause panic, banks claimed that online systems were being taken down for scheduled upgrades. But it's been months now and online services are still not back up. When depositors go to the ATM to withdraw their cash, it seems to decline the transaction and eventually it shuts down the card in suspicion of fraud all in an attempt to stop customers from withdrawing their own money. Three months later, customers still have not been able to access their funds, which has led to various protests and other actions. A large group of very angry demonstrators faced off with the police. The recent mass protests will be worrying for leaders Later on, we'll see how this panic is now spreading to other provinces and the entire Chinese banking sector. But first, let's go over what the authorities' investigation has revealed. Authorities found that four banks in Henan had one commonality, and that commonality was Henan New Fortune Group, who was a shareholder in all four companies. They were the ones who pushed the limits in terms of following the banking restrictions. Since the law requires local banks to stay in their jurisdiction, they decided to advertise online to attract more deposits. On top of pushing the limits in who they can serve, they also misled consumers through false advertising. 
Many depositors who decided to do business with these banks were promised upwards of 4% interest on their deposits. But in reality, these consumers weren't really opening a normal bank account. They were in fact investing in financial products, two completely different things that customers would learn later down the line. Remember these points, as this becomes a bigger issue when the CCP decides to get involved. On top of false advertising, these new deposits didn't go to the banks, oh no no. Henan New Fortune Group colluded with bank employees and made sure that customer deposits went straight to the shareholder accounts. As authorities were made aware of these risky practices, they were quick to charge two executives with fraud. Authorities were able to arrest one executive, but the chairman of the company has since fled the country and is suspected that he has made his way into the United States. With him are gone the $6 billion that customers had deposited into the bank. This is where the true headache for the authorities began. They can't return the money, even if they wanted to. This wasn't some Bertie Madoff type scheme, this was way worse than that. In the case of Madoff, the government was able to recover most of the principal amounts that victims had deposited. But in China's case, there's nothing left to recover. Once all this started coming out, banks were quick to turn off their online systems, which proved a big headache for a lot of their customers. Remember earlier how I mentioned that these banks advertised online to acquire a lot of their depositors? This meant that a lot of those customers were left in the dark when systems went offline. They were stuck in a whole different city or state with no explanation for why they couldn't access their money. This is when some depositors traveled to Henan to get their money and were faced with the long lines and frozen funds. Some of these people had their entire life savings in these banks as they assumed they were safe deposits. This is when, with no hope left, depositors decided to set public protests in hope of getting someone's attention who can help. And they got the attention, but, well, not the kind they were hoping for. Within hours, swaths of local security forces showed up to disperse the protesters, warning them that they were an illegal assembly and would be detained if they refused to leave. Later videos posted on social media showed the scene turning violent. One video showed an unidentified team of men in plain black or white clothes who many have speculated were part of security forces, being pelted with water bottles and other objects as they charged into the crowd. Another video showed individuals being shoved and dragged down the steps by the same plain-clothed men, with some protesters left with broken bones and eye injuries. Experts have pointed out that these plain-clothed men are security forces sent by the government to shut down protests. But the power abuse does not stop there. To deal with the growing number of protesters who were traveling in from different regions, some local officials changed the codes of the personal health apps of more than a thousand depositors to imply that they were at high risk of having been exposed to COVID-19 and prevent them from protesting. This made the situation worse, as the news of power abuse went viral on social media and only exacerbated the panic. One question everyone was asking is, what happened to the government-backed insurance? Similar to FDIC insurance here in the USA, which guarantees up to $250,000 of depositors' money, China has their own bank deposit insurance. A lot of protesters and onlookers wondered, why hasn't that insurance kicked in? Well, hold on tight, because this is where the real finger-pointing begins. Remember earlier when I said that these banks advertised their services as normal deposits, but in reality customers were investing in wealth management products? Yeah, about that. Only regular deposits are covered under deposit insurance, which makes sense as investments do carry risk. The only sucky part is that all these customers thought they were putting their money in as normal deposits and were getting 4% returns, only realizing after the fact that they had been duped. So, some customers decided to take the banks to court in hopes of recovering their money. The court basically said that the bank can't be held liable as it was the employees who colluded with the Hinan Investment Group, not the bank. 
everyone is just trying to shift blame to the next guy, all while average citizens are suffering. Now this is where the CCP puts out a statement to calm the crowds, right? Well, no, not really. The CCP basically said that everyone should look into the numbers and financial statements of the banks before depositing your money. Don't fall for false advertising. Always make sure your money is going in insured banks and not in wealth management products, as only deposits are insured, not wealth management products. Well, I guess it was a little too late for that warning. Now, this news spread like wildfire on social media. People are starting to lose trust in the safety of their money in banks. There are viral posts telling people to withdraw their cash and keep it in their house. Now, if you know anything about the modern banking system, you can see why that's not a good sign for any economy. Most countries work on what's called fractional reserve banking. Here's how that works. Let's say the central bank sets the reserve requirement at 10%. So whenever you deposit $100 in the bank, the bank is only required to keep 10% of that in the vault, or $10. So what the bank will do is take the extra $90 and loan it out to anyone who's looking for a loan. Let's say I get that $90 loan. Now I go spend that $90 on buying a new mic for my studio. Now the person who sold me the mic has $90 and he decides to deposit that into the bank. Now the bank is only required to keep 10% of that, or $9, so they will loan out the other $81. And the cycle will just keep repeating itself, and this is how our modern economy works in very simple terms. But remember, in our imaginary example, all this started with just $100. From that $100, the bank was able to create $1,000 of money in circulation. Now what happens is everyone who deposited the money tries to withdraw it all at once, well, this is when the bank collapses. If too many people try to withdraw too much money. Just to point out, this was an oversimplification of a very complicated topic, but hopefully you get the point. The whole thing is built on trust. People need to be able to trust that banks are safe and their money is safe with them. To ensure that there is trust in the system, the FDIC guarantees the deposits here in the United States. But as China's bank insurance refused to reimburse the victims, that trust is starting to fade for Chinese citizens. Now people are wondering if banks are even a safe place to store their hard-earned money or not. As panic is spreading throughout China, the risk of bank run is increasing rapidly. China's third biggest state-owned bank, Agriculture Bank of China, has already put limits on withdrawals. Currently, customers can only withdraw about $150 per day, and most online activity has been halted. As the situation gets worse, the strain on Chinese financial institutions will only increase. If not managed properly, this can do massive damage to China's already weak economy. It's important to note that the Chinese banking system represents 350% of China's GDP on a balance sheet, while the US system is only 100%. Seven of China's top 10 most profitable companies are banks. China is hugely reliant on its financial institutions, to say the least. So when protests showed no signs of slowing down and news had spread too far to cover up, the authorities had to give in. A few days ago, Chinese authorities announced that they will start repaying most of the victims, but only up to $7,400. The government is trying to bring back social stability by opening up its checkbook to make customers happy, but this opens up a whole new can of worms. Most of these customers had their whole life savings in these banks. For some, that figure ranged in millions of dollars. Is 50,000 yuan or $7,400 going to be enough to calm these victims? While outsiders have wondered, where will this money come from? A lot of people argue that it's not fair to use tax money to repay people. No matter how this turns out, this does have a potential to turn nuclear if not handled correctly. If the public loses confidence in banks' ability to survive on their own, or state support in the event of liquidity stress, it could precipitate exactly the type of crisis authorities are trying to prevent.